In this video, we're going to give you an introduction to how to do stereo correlation using the DICE software package. And we're going to start by going to the DICE GitHub page, and then into the DICE code repository, then to the releases page, and on that page you can find installers for DICE on Mac and Windows. Uh, if you're working on Linux, you have to install everything from source. There's also this examples uh, zip file that you can download that has all the images that we'll use in uh, the examples for any of these, the 2D, the tracking, and in this case, the stereo examples. So assuming that you've already downloaded this zip file and you've got DICE installed, go ahead and open DICE. And the default mode that DICE opens in initially is in the 2D tracking mode. And the way that you switch to stereo is over here using this button that looks like a camera. And we toggle into stereo mode. As far as an overview of what's um, in the GUI itself, on the left hand side is where you select your images. You can perform the calibration. And then under here is where you pick your analysis options, whether you want to run the full DICE um, analysis or you just want to save your um, files into the working directory. On the right hand side, you have all the analysis options that are made available in the GUI. There's a little bit of reference information, links to the documentation, and then down here it shows you what's in your working directory. DICE automatically creates this DICE underscore working directory, uh, but you can pick a different one by selecting this button over here, set working directory. The first thing that we're going to do in this example is run a calibration. So over here in the calibration section, uh, if you already had a calibration done, you can load the cal file. In this case, we're starting from scratch, so we're going to select Perform Cal. And it brings up this interface here. Uh, we need to go into a folder to open all the cal images. So we'll go to that DICE Examples folder, and we're going to go into the Stereo D sample folder. There's one folder that has the images. These are the images that we're actually going to correlate, and these cal images this calendars folder here is what we use to actually do the calibration. So we select that file. It automatically fills in all this information about the extension and the and the suffix, the file suffix that you use to represent the left camera uh, with an underscore zero and the right camera with an underscore one. If you happen to have a different kind of pattern, for example, the dot grid with um, uh, white dots on a black background as opposed to black dots on a white background which we have in these uh, images that you can see below. You can change that here. Here's a little bit of a description of what these different parameters mean. Um, one thing we do need to do is set the pattern spacing size and you can tell from the way the images are named that this is a seven millimeter calibration target but you could get this information from the calibration target itself and this this is the pixel to uh, physical space um, representation of the distance between these dots here. So we're going to change this to 7, which means that all of our results in the analysis are going to be in terms of millimeters. Um, one thing that you'll notice here is there's a preview functionality, so I can look at any of the images in the set of calibration images. And what we need to make sure is happening is that these special colored dots represent the coordinate system and that's letting us know that DICE has found the special marker dots that are at the corner. Um, the pink dots are all of the dots uh, that have been found in the image that will be used uh, for the calibration. But if you go to say somewhere around 12 or 13 you'll notice that in these images it didn't find all the dots that it needed to to have a successful calibration. So if we turn on the thresholding, then we can actually see why that's happening. It's because the corner here is getting lopped off by the thresholding. So you might need to, to change these parameters to make sure that in every image that you have a cal um, target in, that you can actually see enough dots to uh, do a calibration. So we're going to turn off the adaptive threshold, and we're going to change the thresholding constant to something smaller make it like 30 in the low 30s and you can see that by doing that we're able to make this particular image image number 13 in the sequence now dice can find all the um, dots that it needs to, to do the calibration so at this point uh, you can go through and do some more spot checking to see 
which images fail and which images it actually finds the dots. Um, or you can come over here to the um, calibration and actually run the calibration and we'll see some output results in this uh, list down here. Depending on the number of images you have uh, in your calibration uh, images, it will impact the amount of time that it takes to run the calibration. But in general, more images uh, will provide you a better, uh, um, more accurate calibration. At this point, the calibration is finished and it's showing the average epipolar error is around 0.4. Typically, you want this to be less than a half a pixel. And then it shows you in this window here the error for each of the images in the sequence. And so if you find one that you think is particularly large, for example, this one being 0.57, it's not too bad, but it's still larger than the others, you can turn that image off by just selecting it. If for some reason an image failed, like this one here, we can turn these off as well. Um, if you just select the image, it will only pick that one. You need to control or apple click in order to select multiple images. So we'll turn off those two that failed and then we'll run the calibration again and see if we can improve our error. It may or may not improve depending on um, the particular images that are involved. Another thing that you could do uh, to get maybe these images to pass here is adjust the thresholding constant and look at image 47 to make sure that all the dots um, were actually found, all the target dots were found in the image. That could also be a reason why this one failed. And it didn't really impact our average epipolar error, uh, so we're just going to go ahead and accept the solution. And what that does is it creates a cal.txt file and automatically loads that into the calibration. So we've got the calibration part of our process complete. The next thing we need to do is load the images. And we're going to do these by selecting them individually. So for the left camera, we're going to go back into that uh, dice examples folder, stereo D sample in the images, and we're going to uh, select uh, this image for the left side as the reference image, and similarly for the right side, we're going to use the underscore one image as the reference. So the underscore zero is left, underscore one is the right side. You'll see this. Uh, yellow box that's been drawn on here and that gives you an, uh, um, a sense of how big the subset size is compared to the speckle size. In this case the default size is roughly about uh, what we need. If you select this uh, check in the circle here that will test where in the image has enough contrast in order to be successful with the subset based method and so each of these dots here represents where a subset will be placed in the image. If you wanted to select only a certain portion of the image you can for example draw an ROI on here which stands for region of interest like so, and then only this part of the uh, image will be analyzed as shown by the dots only showing up inside the green region. But in this case we want to do as much of the image as we can, so we're going to go ahead and delete the regions of interest. And we need to load our deformed images. So for the left side we're using the 110th image as reference use 129th as the deformed. We're only doing a single image in the sequence and the same for the right side. Um, that's all you need to do as far as selecting images. There's also an option to do things by uh, sequence of images if you have several or you can do it from high-speed video files. Um, 
in the analysis options, we're doing the subset based full field, so we want displacements and strains everywhere. Uh, if you were trying to track objects in the image, you would set that to tracking. Um, the initialization method we're using is feature matching, so we're using feature matching to both line up the cross correlation and get our initial displacements um, in the reference frame. Um, the SSIG threshold is how uh, setting the level of contrast that you need in order to um, define a subset in a particular region. The shape functions we're going to use, uh, translation is always activated by default, but we're also going to include normal stretch and we're going to compute strains. Uh, the gauge size here is set in increments of the step size that you set above. Uh, if we want to omit the text files that are output, DICE outputs in Exodus file and in comma separated text files, but if you don't need the text files, you can select this option here. We want to define a coordinate system in the left side, so to be able to view this a little bit better, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close the right window, so we're just looking at the left. And I want to use a best fit plane, and these, uh, the green and red dots here define the start and the end of the x-axis. So what this will do is it will set our, our coordinate system in the model uh, space to have this as the origin with the x direction going in, along this line here. If you wanted to treat this as the y direction, let's say you wanted to define the y direction, then you would select this treat axis as y axis. We're not going to do any filtering in this case, so um, this we're not selecting this option here. A couple other things that you can change about the workspace here. You can change the orientation if these are both open. If you'd rather have them instead of side by side, if you want them stacked on top of each other, that's how you would change that here. And you can get rid of the analysis options if you want more space to view the images. Below here we've got some information on how to run DICE. This is very high level, not very much detail. Links to the source code and the documentation. And then this is all the files that are in the results directory. So now that we've set up our calibration, we've got our files loaded for the reference and deformed uh, images for both the left and the right camera. Uh, it makes the run stereo option available down here in the analysis window. So we go ahead and click on that. If there was, uh, if you've run DICE previously and there's results in the folder that you're using for your working directory, it will give you a warning that you're going to overwrite those. And down here in the console, we can see that at this point, the executables is performing the cross correlation between the left and the right images. This only happens during the first um, during the first step. If you don't want to see the console, you can minimize it here. Now that the cross-correlation is complete, it's processing the first frame, so that's this uh, frame that we have loaded in the deformed images. And we can see the analysis is still running uh, because it's got this bar that's showing blue. When the analysis is complete, this will turn to green if it was successful, or red if there was some sort of problem that happened. So now we've got a message that says the analysis was successful. We can look at the results in pair view. We can also see that some files were created in the results. This is uh, an Exodus file that has all the output. The solution.info file has information about the options that were selected. And this dice solution underscore zero, this is for the zero with frame. It has all of the field values in a comma separated file. Timing tells you how long it took um, per frame. Projection out and these best fit plane.dat files, these are things that DICE uses to set up that um, coordinate system using this as the origin here. So now that the results are available, we can go into pair view and actually look at the results. Go to open, navigate to that results folder. 
I'll turn all the fields on and I'm going to turn off apply displacement so we don't deform the mesh. And each of the dots here represents uh, a subset from the analysis. In order to see this a little bit better, I'm going to use a Delaunay filter. Apply that. You can see that it covered over the holes in there to get those hole backs, holes back. We can change the um, the alpha setting on here um, to open this back up. A couple of things to mention about the different fields. Uh, you'll notice that there's things like displacement, model displacement, and stereo displacement. How come there's three different displacement fields in here? Well, the displacement is the subset displacement from the perspective of the left camera. The model displacement is the physical displacement of that point in 3D space in terms of your uh, global coordinate system that we defined using the uh, best fit plane. And the stereo displacement is the displacement as observed from the right camera. So if you want to know what's happening in physical, physical space, you look at things like the model displacement and the model coordinates. And if we go to the X coordinates, we can see that this point roughly where we define that best fit plane. You can look at the model coordinates and you can see that that's near the center so we must have had our our point um, that we defined for that best fit plane was somewhere to the left a little bit of here. You look at things like the the strain in the y direction you can adjust the color contours to match the current data range using these buttons up here to move between uh, different steps in the analysis but in this particular case we only have one step. The last thing I want to mention is that if you look at the values for sigma you can see that in the upper left hand corner there's some sigma values of negative one and that means that for some reason these particular subsets up here didn't track. Either they didn't have enough contrast so you could go back and adjust your SSIG um, threshold or these points aren't visible in both the left and the right camera. Uh, those are just a couple of reasons why uh, subsets fail. But otherwise that gives you a pretty good overview of how to run a stereo analysis in DICE. Um, for more information about things related to DICE you can consult the, uh, the user manual uh, and the links for that are in the GUI itself right here on the on the right hand side so thanks